So we all know how amazing rose water is, but did you know that you can actually turn any plant into its own floral waters? All you'll need are some flowers or herbs and some distilled water. So if you want to know how to make your own floral waters, then keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome to Hold Elise. I'm Elise and today we're going to be extracting some plant essence to make our own floral water sprays. So you might actually be wondering what floral waters are. Well, floral waters, also known as flower waters or hydrosol, are essentially just water that's been infused with the fragrance of a flower. Now, rose water is probably the most common and widely spread. However, you can make any type of floral water as well as herbal waters using a very simple technique that I'll show you in this tutorial. And unlike essential oils, which have also been extracted from plants, floral waters can be used on all ages. They don't need to be diluted. They can be used on your hair and your skin and other sensitive areas. And you can actually ingest them, meaning that you can also get a lot of the health benefits of the original plant. They're also a fraction of the price and you can make them in your own home. So how about we get straight into making our own floral waters? So let's start by making our floral blends. Rose water is a staple for a reason, but I'm giving it a boost by combining the dried petals with hibiscus flowers. Known for its medicinal properties, but also incredible skin benefits, including increasing elasticity, evening out skin tones, and exfoliating skin for a younger, smoother appearance. Chamomile can promote sleep and relieve stress, but it's also a powerful antioxidant that soothes the skin and reduces blemishes. Calendula flowers also have soothing qualities that provide relief for eczema and sensitive skin. And lastly, a selection of fresh flowers and herbs that have a wide variety of benefits. So you can make floral waters out of both fresh and dried flowers, and I'll be making three different types. The first two will be made out of dried flowers. This one is rose and hibiscus, and this one is calendula and chamomile. And my third floral water is very special. This one is actually made from fresh flowers and herbs picked from my grandparents' garden. This one literally smells like spring in a bottle. To prep our fresh flowers for the distilling process, separate the petals from the stems and wash thoroughly. Fresh herbs and flowers haven't had time to lose their precious substances, so they make for better quality extracts. It's also a great way to preserve part of your garden in full bloom. Combine the calendula and chamomile flowers, as well as the rose and hibiscus flowers. I'll be making three floral water sprays, calendula and chamomile, rose and hibiscus, and mixed flowers and herbs. To prep our dried flowers, it's best to let them soak for a couple hours. The calendula and chamomile make for a wonderful healing and soothing floral water. For an anti-aging boost, combine the rose and hibiscus dried flowers, packed full of antioxidants, skin plumping and rejuvenating properties. This is great for improving textured skin along with overall health and hair benefits. So to extract the essence from our flowers, it will need to go through a distilling process. Now that sounds so much more complicated than it is. Essentially, all we need to do is to heat our flowers and water together, collect the steam, turn that steam back into water, and that final water will be our floral water or hydrosol. Now to do this, we will need some equipment, but these will be things that you already have in your kitchen. So we'll need a pot like this that has a corresponding lid. We'll place our flour and water in the pot. If you have a steamer, it doesn't need to be stainless steel, but you'll place that inside your pot on top of your flowers and water. Then you'll need a heat proof bowl that you'll place inside. And finally, you'll need a lid. Now the type of lid is actually quite important. What you want is a lid that has a curve and peaks at the top because we'll actually be placing this lid upside down. So when the steam rises and hits the lid, it will then turn into water. And because it's got a curve, it will actually direct the water back into the bowl that's placed in the middle of our steamer. Now, if you don't have a steamer, don't worry. If you have another heat proof bowl, you can actually place that at the bottom of your pan and then place another bowl on top of it. All we're looking for is that the flowers and water at the bottom of our pan doesn't come in contact with the bowl that collects our flower water. And this will be all the equipment that you need to make your floral water or hydrosol. Now the technique is actually slightly different depending on if you're using fresh flowers or dried flowers, so keep watching for that. To make a hydrosol, pour your flowers and water into a pot. Roughly you'll need one part flowers to ten parts water. So if you're using half a cup of fresh flowers, you'll need five cups or around one liter of distilled water. Place your steamer, heat proof bowl and inverted lid on top 
and leave the flowers to simmer. You can use a bag of ice to speed up the steam turning back into water but it's not essential and you'll also need to routinely place your ice as it begins to melt. After about 30 minutes you should have your fresh garden mixed floral waters. The water that has gathered into our bowl is our finished floral water or hydrosol. It's been a couple hours and you can see that the dried flowers have fully hydrated and are ready to be made into floral waters. Even though the water has been dyed, your finished floral waters won't have any colour so you don't need to worry about it staining. Like before, simmer your flowers over low heat. To make sure that your pot doesn't boil dry, routinely stir your flowers to make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom of the pan. So there are several benefits to making and using your own floral waters. As I mentioned before, they are a condensed plant essence, but unlike essential oils, they're nowhere near as potent, and that means that they have several more uses. So if you keep them in a spray bottle like this, they're amazing for using as a facial toner. All of these have cell renewal and rejuvenating properties that will do wonders for your skin. Their light scent works really well as a summer or room refresher spray, but they can also be used on fabric. As they don't contain any oil, you don't need to worry about them staining. And if you're making herbal waters like green tea for instance, you could add this to your DIY creams and lotions, and that way you would get all of their antioxidant and anti-aging benefits. And for a beginner friendly tutorial on how to make your own lotions and creams, click the video link above. Floral waters can also be used in cooking, and if you add a little bit of sweetness to them, they can be used as a syrup or make an amazing summer drink. These mini spray bottles are great for floral waters, especially if you want to use them as facial toners or a fresher sprays. Pure hydrosols don't have any alcohol or oil in them, which is why they can be used on your face without any concern. Now you will need to store these in the fridge, but because we use distilled water, they should have a decent shelf life of around 6 months. But if you do notice any sort of discoloration or it starts to smell a bit weird, obviously just discard these and make a fresh batch. But if you are looking for something that's a little bit more intense, why not check out my tutorial teaching you how to make your own perfumes. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more natural hair care and skincare tutorials. Ever tried making your own perfume? Check out my natural perfume tutorial below to make a signature scent.